Hello everyone, George here, and we are back in my implementation of Toe Jam and Earl in VR concept piece. It is 4.43 a.m. and I cannot sleep, so why not waste my time um, on something like this? So last we left off, I believe I started implementing presents, uh, specifically tomatoes and uh, the tomato rain, I think is what we left off with. It's been about a week since I've opened this project up and very busy studying for my PhD qualifier and just generally getting stuff done at work. So let's see, we've got character, enemy, tomato, character, movement. so let's see what tomato does. So tomato collides with something. We have a damage system, it looks like, and it damages that particular object, and then it destroys a tomato. And let's see, we've got enemy, which is something we started to put together based upon character as well, where we just kind of copy and pasted some of the stuff over, right? Heal, take damage, yeah, typical stuff, and destroy the object if necessary. And then we have presence, which really is just a list of the types of presence at this mo uh, moment. Nothing going on there. Now, we should have somewhere in here the handling of presence. So where did I do that? Let's close out a Vive input. So we have right hand, left hand. Ah, then we have use present, and then it chooses whatever the present type is. So in this case, Fudge Sunday's done. Icarus wings need to be implemented. Rain tomatoes starts the rain tomato coroutine, in which case it then begins to spawn tomatoes everywhere. You know what we're going to do? Let's experiment and make sure this actually works. So let's do a um, input dot get key down, and then we'll do key code dot what? I guess alpha one, alpha numeric one, and then what we'll do is if this. Then we are going to rain. So we will use a use present and then we will pass in the present type, which is just going to be let's see, present types dot rain tomatoes, which should then trigger use present, which should then trigger spawning tomatoes there. So let's come over here, save it hit run, and I don't have the VR system set up at the moment, so we're just gonna kinda go with whatever we got here. Let's move game view over here, hit the one key. Let's see, fail to initialize open, yes. You know what, let's at least give it something to work with. So we'll open up VR. Let's exit out of Steam VR really fast and see what's going on here. All right, it's complaining about the headset, so let's restart that. And of course we get the annoying HTC Vive junk that always pops up even though you don't want it ever to. Okay, looks like we're ready. Doesn't matter that the sensors aren't working. We're not really testing it for that. All right, let's hit run. Oh, you know what? Do we have... So, do we, do we even have all the stuff set up yet? So we have character, which should be attached to... Here's character controller, here's character movement. We do not have character, though, attached to it. So let's go to body, attach character. Prefab for the tomatoes. So let's go to prefabs, tomato, stick that in there. Now let's hit run. Now in here, we'll press one key. And there's our tomatoes. There are our tomatoes falling down, smacking things, but they're not blowing up. So they should probably explode regardless. Now let's make sure that this lasts. And also let's make sure our radius thing is working properly. So if we move our character, I want to make sure that the tomatoes move along with it. And it looks like that's what's happening. So yeah, one thing we want to change is in the tomato script, regardless of what it happens to collide with, we're still going to destroy this object. It's just what, it's just, um, if it's an enemy, we will make it take damage as well. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Now let's go ahead and hit run and hit one. And did it not save? Did it not update? Tomato on collision, enter, collision, destroy this dot game object. Hmm. That's odd. Let's give this one more go. Hmm. Yeah, it's not destroying the tomatoes. Now, a few things we do want to do, though, is that when the tomato gets generated, we probably want a maximum time. So let's do uh, float max time alive is equal to, and I'm going to say no longer than probably no more than 15 seconds and then we'll do a 
um, destroy, and then we'll do this dot game object, and then we'll do that in max time alive. Okay, so our tomato itself, if we come over here, now the tomato has a rigid body, uses gravity, it's not kinematic, that's all right. It's got a sphere collider, which is not a trigger. So let's see what happens now. Well, they're lasting way too long, that's for sure. Oh, you know what? Does tomato even have the tomato script on it? No, it doesn't. Once again, silly mistakes that I'm making. So let's go ahead and put the tomato script on the tomato and hit run now. There we go. Now they're at least dying. But as you can see, they last way too long going down into the pit. So let's go ahead and modify that number, make it from 15, maybe down to eight seconds. Plop, 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 plop. Well, now we do need to add sound. That's another thing we need. So can we find the old Toe Jam and Earl sounds? Let's see. Toe Jam and Earl Sega sounds. It says voice samples. I don't know what that means. Oh, wow. It looks like it's everything. So is there tomato or splat? There's tomato launch, smush. No, that's not the right sound. Um, youch, yeah, all right. Whoa, whoa, wake up, wake up. Tomato launch. Nope. Toe jam, telephone, sprint, spring, splash. That's when you go in the water. Smush. So I'm guessing it's smush. That's going to be very annoying to listen to. I don't think it's, that's the right sound, but I don't really have any other options with this list. So why don't we go ahead and take this entire group of sound effects and bring them into our thing. Uh, so Sega SFX. Cut that. And come over here. Okay, so we are going to want audio sources then on our objects. So let's go ahead and do that. So our tomato, add component, audio source. We do not want this to play on awake. We do not want it to loop. We want this to be a one shot. We can play this with a point clip instead. Let's actually, we want to attach the sound effect, don't we? Because the object's going to get destroyed. So we can do a audio clip. Um, tomato. Explode. We can make this a serialized field and grab that. And then inside of here, regardless of what happens, we're going to do an audio source. Actually, can we do, oh, I forget, can you do it with the audio clip or does it have to be the, the play at point? So if we did audio source, audio source. And let's just in start do a audio source uh, is equal to get component audio source. Now, I think this is not going to work if I remember correctly. We have to do the one shot. I do audio source dot. Let's see, play one shot. Plays an audio clip and scales the audio source volume by. So I'm pretty sure that's a, is that the static method? Play scheduled, play delayed, play. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's play one shot, but I'm pretty sure we can also, can't we do audio source dot play? We can do play clip at point. So let's see if one shot works. Actually, let's just look it up. So audio source uh, play one shot unity. All right, so play one shot allows you to apparently to play multiple audio clips and they don't interfere with one another on the same one. So we're going to want to not use play one shot. We're going to want to use audio source dot play clip at point. And then we're just going to play our clip. So we'll grab our audio source and we'll do a this dot transform dot position. Now let's see what else. There's also a float volume, but that's fine. We don't need that. So we can get rid of audio source and we have audio clip. Now we could instantiate the clip itself and have it play at the right location, which would allow us to have all the audio source parameters that we're normally familiar with, but it shouldn't really matter for what we're handling. So why don't we go back to our tomato, remove the audio source, and all we need to do now is in the script, 
Um, make sure that we have the right thing. So we've got a couple errors. Let's go and check them out. Enemy is not defined. Well, let's clear this really fast. Expected semicolon. Where? Here. Okay, and this should not be audio source. This should be tomato explode. Okay, and let's see. That's good. Now we just need tomato explode from our SFX archive. So let's find, and then what was it? Smoosh. So now let's see if that works. Tag enemy is not defined. So I don't have a tag called enemy, which is causing some problems. So let's go ahead and add that. Enemy, save. And I couldn't hear anything, but then again, I think I have my speakers really low. So let's turn that up a little bit and give it another go. Hit one. There we go. Okay. Well, that works. So that that's one more thing we got right. Uh, what do we want to do next? Let's move on to something else. Um, we could spend all day on these stupid tomatoes. So let's go back to character and take a take a minute and think about the different presents we have access to and what we want them to do. So Icarus wings, rocket skates, and spring shoes are all going to be things that modify how we move around. Um, they'll also modify what kind of models we have on our hands. So can we access hand, right, hand, left? Yes, we have public static instances. Um, we're probably going to want to create models that are held. So if we do a public, uh, maybe not public, what do I want to do actually for this? So I want to have a game object that's underneath the body. So right now we have a cube and a sphere. So I'm probably going to want to know what my object is. So how do I want to do this? Do I want references to each of the different models? Is that what I want to do? And I'll just instantiate them as necessary? Or do I want to have all the different models already loaded on the object and then just turned off until I actually need to use them? Both are valid ways of handling this situation. So the only ones I need to worry about at the moment are I need a public game object, uh, let's say toe jam hand, hand right, and then public game object, toe jam, wing right, uh, public game object. I don't think rocket skates, it's just the wings and the hand I need, I think. Right? Maybe we should just do this. Now if we go to character, Icarus wing, wings, rocket skates and spring shoes go on our feet. So that's a whole other issue that we don't have right now. They would, so, so we don't have feet in the game yet. And I don't think I'm going to be putting feet in there, which means I need something below us that has these things on them. Uh, so that will be something else we'll have to have, but they will not be attached to the hands, so I don't need to worry about them just yet. So let's work on Icarus wings, I guess. So we'll do toe jam hand left. Technically, you should be able to choose which character you are, whether you're toe jam or Earl. So we might want to do load all of them. For right now, I mean, yeah, it's a little, little stupid to load all of them. It's going to be one or the other. You don't get to switch players. But for the moment, when doing this concept, it's probably going to just be easier for us to do that. So that being said, what we probably should do is Toe Jam and Earl Sega. We should probably find the box art, which is right here, and then create arms um, for each of them inside of Maya. Let's see, Toe Jam only has three fingers there. How many fingers does he have here? He's got, I guess he only has three. Okay, so three fingers and Earl is just, he's just got lumps for hands, fl flippers. So let's save this for now and minimize this. And let's jump into Maya and see about throwing together some really quick hands. Um, for for this character. So file, recent projects, Toe Jam and Earl. Let's go to preferences. Go ahead and go to settings. Set this to meters, save. 
And um, yeah, let's uh, make a hand, I guess. I'm trying to think about the orientation I'm going to want it to be at because it's going to be down the z-axis. We're probably going to want a part of the arm, but let's start with toe jam, I guess, and go to two mode because if we notice, he's got kind of Mickey Mouse hands uh, or Sonic the Hedgehog hands as well with the gloves. So we can just kind of do something like this a little bit, make that outer part of it. And then we can go ahead and just take this and do an extrusion inwards. Let's go ahead and pull that in and then hit the G key, pull this out to make the beginnings of his hands. And we can just maybe grab, although actually maybe we want to do this. We want to do, his thumb is going to be right around there. And then we can grab this piece, move that out, grab this piece, move that out a bit. And then we can come in here, do another cut around there, and then pull out his thumb. Maybe somewhere like that. Pull that down. Now we'll need to split his hand in half. Maybe down that way. Now when I do that, I'm going to lose rounding. So what I need to do is probably grab the whole thing and pull it out a little bit like that. Now I'm also, I don't have any rounding going the other way. So I might want to come in here, grab these parts here and here here and up here and just kind of pull them out a little bit and then we can deal with the fingers at this point we can do an extrusion keep faces together should be turned off and then we can just pull them out now those are really thick so what we might want to do is actually carve in the center a gap between the two fingers like that and then grab each of these pull them apart a little bit and then go from there and then we can go ahead and scale each of these down individually and then if we want to we should probably grab these and maybe pull them together a little bit and then let's go ahead and Add some multi cuts on the ends. Scale these down. Uh, we'll do that independently. And I'm just trying to get a general sense of what his hands look like. And I don't think we're very far off, um, especially for concept. We don't really need to waste too much time putting this hand together, I think. Now, if anything, it's a little wide. So let's just kind of. Play with it a little bit. And I mean, if we want, wanted to, this is where we would come in and we could add additional um, uh, subdivisions and maybe tweak a few things, like maybe move this out here, maybe this side out a little bit as well. And then these fingers here, maybe push this in a little bit. And then if we wanted to, um, we could push in the underside so that you could actually tell one side from the other and maybe pull up this side a little bit. Because I believe with hands, if I look at mine really fast, the one side kind of comes up compared to the other. So we can grab both of these and move them up a little closer to the top. We can do the same thing with these ones here. I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. Make the, make the detail flow a little bit better, I think. All right, very crude, very rough, but it is a toe jam hand. Now we're going to have wings. So that makes me think I'm going to add a little bit more of the arm, at least the upper part of the arm into this so we're going to do another extrusion. I want to hit the G key. We're just going to pull this up 
And I'm also going to come back here with a multi cut and add a cut right in there, really close to the other one. And now, with that, that should be enough of the arm for us. Great. So let's go to Edit, Delete by Type History. And if anything, I kind of want this thumb a little bit more uppish. Let's rotate this like that. Let's grab this again. Maybe just scale that down a wee bit and save that. Let's go to Scenes. And then, let's see, Toe Jam, Arm. Uh, what is this, Left? No, it's for zero one. And then we can take the same arm. Um, I'm trying to think of scale here. So this is in meters. So obviously a hand is not a meter in size. So we're going to shrink this down to, I would say a hand is shy of a foot. So probably somewhere like this is a good size. Um, now the other thing too is with your controller, the hand should probably be like this. Now rotating it like that, immediately shows some problems with the hand, uh, like the fact that it does not kind of bow outwards. So if we take these elements here and just kind of pop them out a little, I think that helps just enough. Okay, and now we're going to take this. Now I'm not exactly sure where it's going to line up with the position of the controller, so we're just going to leave it in the middle of the wrist for now. So let's call this toe jam arm um, left. Let's go to modify freeze transforms. We'll freeze all of them. Save that. Now we're going to duplicate this. Control D. And then we will uh, mirror it. So let's go ahead to mesh and do a flip on it. Mesh, mirror. And then we want to do a flip across the x-axis. Hit apply. Close. And then we'll call this R. All right, so now we've got both hands for Toe Jam. Why don't we go ahead and export these out? So File, um, Game Exporter, choose our directory. Let's go back up, find the game, Assets, Models, New Folder, let's call this Arms. And of course, Toe Jam, uh, Arm. Well, which one do we have selected left? And we will rename this and export. Now we don't have materials yet, which is kind of stupid of me, but we'll get to it later on. Okay, so now we've got those two. So what I'm gonna do is hide the left, uh, the right arm. And then now we also need the Icarus wing version of this. So I need to, Icarus wing, I wanna kind of jumpstart my memory here a little bit and try to remember, here we go, so that's it. So it looks like two large protrusions with something wrapped around the arm, a, a buckle, and then a series of feathers coming out of the sides. So this should be relatively easy for us to put together. So we're just going to make a long block like this, something like that maybe. Put this on the underside of the model, like right there. Now what I do want to do is duplicate this, and we're going to hide the original and say winged arm, or just wings. Okay, and this way I can make some changes to this model without disrupting the original. So something like this. Just want this to line up flush with this thing. So this should be fine. And I'm trying to see if it's long enough. I think so. And we just need a belt buckle to kind of wrap around this. Uh, so we can probably do a cylinder. Something like that. Rotate this sucker 90 degrees. And there's a couple different ways we could do this. This isn't necessarily the best, but it will work. And we can take the outside of this and Kind of scale it like that. We can go on the inside now, 
nuke all the interior features. And now we should be able to do a bridge. Whoops, I hate it when it does that. So instead what we can do is bridge one element to give it a starting point and then see if we can't bridge the rest. And there we go. Great. Now we have way too much detail. It's going to actually make it more difficult for us to work with. So let's go ahead and get rid of a few of these just to make life easier. Actually, that's probably good enough. So let's just push these in. And then the scaling isn't going to be perfect on this. So just bear with me here because of the way we're doing this. We could have done um, a curve and then extruded along the curve if we wanted to. It would have been one way of handling it. But like I said, it doesn't really matter at this point. Just tweaking, spending too much time on it already. And all we need to do now is sort of wrap this around the two pieces. So we can put, so actually I am going to scale it up this way. Move this somewhere there. Scale that up to there. Grab all this. Move that there. Move that in. Move that over. And really, I'm going to take these and kind of just stick them somewhere that's going to make the curvature a little bit better. And now we're just going to play for a second. There we are. And our band is a little bit off on the bottom. So let's go ahead and fix that. So we'll kind of bring this up and over. This one will come over here, I guess. I can stay there. See, I like how it is on this side. This side's kind of nice. This side, not so nice. So let's do a little bit of tweaking. It's kind of going in on it a little bit, I think. Grab that whole loop, not just part of it. Okay, so that's one band. I think we're gonna do two. So let's take it, duplicate it, move it off over here. And I'm gonna scale it up a little bit. And with that, we're gonna to need to tweak a little bit more. But we should have a good starting spot. I'm just gonna, see, I'm trying to find that sweet spot. I think it's good. I think we're going to need to make it. It'll be like right there. And then we can just pull this out. Oh, looks like there is another edge loop, but that's fine. Okay, almost done. Just tweak in a little bit more. Now we added that extra edge loop. The question is, do we really need it? I mean, if we kind of tweak this one and bring it down a little bit, it's really not necessary. Okay, so we've got our arm and we've got this uh, long piece of wood. Now we need feathers. Um, so let's get a reference picture of a feather, just so we know what we're working with. And guessing we're going to go with more stylized, kind of like that. So let's use that as, as a kind of a template for us. And I guess we can use cubes for this. So we'll do a thin cube kind of going up. And then we'll want these a varying size and shape. So if we do a multi cut right down the center of this, grab the top piece of this move. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. We can do that and then if we take this edge bevel it we can grab this now 
pull that down, and that's the the shaft of the feather. Take both of these and move them up, and then out. And we've got that. And now we should probably do something about the thickness of the feather. But I want to be careful. I don't want to introduce a bunch of Z fighting. So you'll notice I did screw something up there. So let's move this back out and this back out. This is going to get duplicated a lot, so I want to spend a little bit of time making sure my geometry isn't just total junk before I do this. Now, I should probably unwrap it as well early on. Um, at least do a planer on the object. Eh, that's not very good. Can we do um, coming at this from, see what axis is this, X? Apply, close, and at least we should probably slice off the front and the back, right? Or at least we can make a cut. We should probably make a cut going along this side, this side. Yes, I know it's very early to be thinking about UVs, but why not? So there's our nasty unfolded geometry. And it looks like... I'm trying to think best place to make cuts here. Really, it's it's this stuff here that's kind of causing some problems. But I don't want to just cut it into two halves. Uh, I guess I could, right? Why not? I can make a seam right through the whole thing. Cut, UV shells, unfold. Ooh, that's not good. Whoa, that's the exact opposite of good. That's that's pretty bad. Uh, let's do a planer again. And you know what? I think I'm just going to leave it as planer for right now. Yeah, we're, we're going to leave it like that. Let's go ahead now. And actually, you know what? I kind of want this to have a little bit more life to it. So let's, let's come back in here really fast and do a multi-cut. Coming at it from, let's see, the side here. And then I want to do maybe one, two cuts, and then maybe just give it some kind of character. And then maybe pull in on one side a little bit. Okay, I like that better. So now that we have this, let's edit, delete the history on it and start thinking about how we're going to make this into our feather thing. So it's already pretty huge. Um, so we're probably going to want to scale it down. But I imagine when we, when we work on this, we're going to have multiple ones. So let's see, so it's not centered. So modify, let's center the pivot on this thing. Still not centered to me. So I'm gonna do this, just manually go in there. And then we're gonna take it, I think, put it right here and start duplicating things. And then this will just be more of a manual placement, I guess, for now. And then we can use Shift D to help out a little bit. But then obviously it takes it a little bit too far. So then we'll do something like this. And I'm going to um, D. I want to snap this down to this end, I think. Scale that one out a little bit, but maybe make it thin. And then I do, now that I think about it, we're going to go back a little bit. And we're going to move these pivots into a little bit better place. Okay. Then we're going to shift D this. And then I'm going to shift D. I'm actually going to bring one up over here. I 
And then let's shift D this again. And then at some point, this should all just become a texture, most likely. Um, but at the same time, we've got some polys to spare at the moment with our concept piece, so why not throw them away on something? So really, we want kind of like layers. So let's do something like this, where we make a thicker version variant. And I'm going to take these pieces here, and we're going to move these in. No, that wasn't it. That was a mistake. Let's do it like that. And then let's D, B, let's reset the pivot. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. This is better. I kind of just want to play with this for a second here. Not going to worry too much about Z fighting at this point. I'm going to take, I guess, this one, shift D it, kind of rotate it here, and then we're just going to put these along the edge. Now, this is the left hand, so this is the outside, and that's kind of what I think I want for placement. So let's go ahead and just shift D, shift D. These almost look like leaves. I don't know if they're quite feathers. It's okay. We're going to rotate this ever so slightly. Then we're going to go through a series of rotations. Now these ones I do want to get smaller as we get back to the edge. I do want these ones to be bigger. Whoops. And then now I almost want to take the whole thing, duplicate it, bring it on the other side, shift it halfway, and then maybe move it up slightly. We're a, we're a little bit off, if you didn't notice. And since these are going to be so close to the hand, which is close to your face, I kind of do want them to line up. Just a little bit of lining up. Okay. All right, and you know what? That's probably good enough. Let me take another look at the model. Um, where was it? Yeah, I mean, it's really not much more uh, than that. So why don't we just go ahead and take all of this nastiness and combine it together? And then take our straps. Now the arm I'm thinking we should just group it together. I'll, I'll bring the straps in on this. I'll take all this. I'll group that. Let's go to edit, delete all by type history. And let's say toe jam arm, toe jam, wing, left. Now let's duplicate that. Call, call it right. And then let's go to, I believe I can mirror groups, right? Mesh, mirror, flip. Hit apply, close, and we should be good to go. Now let's go ahead and export these out. So file, um, game exporter, and then toe jam wing, left, export, and toe jam wing right, and export. Okay. All right, let's jump over to Unity really fast and see what we have. Okay, so we've got our hands, which we can come over here now and replace the cubes with. Um, so let's go ahead and go to arms and go to toe jam. So what is this? This is our left, so let's put left under here. And then we have right, so let's put right under there as well. Get rid of the cube, get rid of the sphere. And those are our hands right there. 
And now I'm not 100% sure on the pivots of these. It looks like it's going to be around the wrist, which may or may not work. Uh, we'll have to find out. I'm going to go ahead and add the left wing and the right wing. And then we're just going to disable them. So actually, did I just screw something up? So we have toe jam arm left, toe jam, uh-oh. It looks like, did I export something improperly? So we have toe jam arm left, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of toe jam arm L, continue. Then we have the wing and we have the other one. Right, this doesn't have, oh, you know what? Look, it does have two models. I bet you all of them do. So let's go ahead and undo our export really fast. So we want to do delete, delete, delete. Come back to Maya, and I know exactly what I did now. So file, once again, the game exporter, for all that it's good, it defaults to export all, which is bad. So let's do L, export, yes. Let's do R, export. Yes, and go to display, show all, and go here, we'll call this toe jam arm L, export, yes, okay, and toe jam arm R, export, yes, okay. Come back to Unity now, let it load itself up. Now we can go to toe jam arm left, Toe jam arm right, toe jam left wing, and toe jam right wing. And there we go. Those are some big old Icarus wings, so we might want to scale them down eventually. But for now, it's fine. Let's go ahead and just disable those. And uh, yeah, now we've got arms. So we're at the 50 minute mark, so I'm going to take a quick break and uh, eventually we'll jump back in here and probably see. I'm interested in wondering how we're going to implement Icarus Wings, whether it's going to be a constant uplift or whether we need to do some sort of math to determine the player rising or raising and lowering their arms. And I'm not 100% sure how I want to do that, whether or not I want to use the head as a baseline maybe. And then if you raise your arms above your head um, and then you raise them below some spot, that would count as a wing flap or if the speed matters. A lot of, lot of properties, and once again, I'm probably going to make it as simple as possible, so I want to take a few minutes and think about that. I'll see you all next time. So long and goodbye. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, remember to subscribe and hit the bell if you want notifications about new videos I upload. And if you'd like to help even more, consider becoming a patron on my Patreon account. Links, as always, are in the description. See you next time. So long, goodbye.